Penta is one of the most well-known teams in all of R6 esports because they were widely known as the best team in the game in the early days of Rainbow Six Siege. The reason for this is because they won many tournaments in the beginning of Rainbow Six Siege esports, including their first major tournament win, Season 1 of Pro League. Penta's roster at the time was made up of Pangu, Rendir, Crip, S4i, and Ovi. Now I'm going to go into depth about all these players, but starting with the most well-known of the five, Pangu. Within the first few weeks of Rainbow Six Siege coming out, Pangu had already joined a pro team, and after many of hours of grinding, he would quickly become known as the best player on the best team in Pro League. Oh, he's Marinka, are you ready for this? Oh. Yes! Pangu, are you kidding me with a third getting taken down? And then... The drop right below, and his third Pangu gets it As well as being known for his entertaining Twitch streams... Oh. <laughs> he actually got... <laughs> quickly making him probably the most well-known person in the Rainbow Six Siege community in the first few years. But with all this notoriety, not all of it was positive. Pengu became known to do some controversial things, including going on some rants, complaining about a lot of the things wrong with Siege at the time, and more. He was seen as so toxic that Ubisoft themselves told Pengu he was going to be basically banned from tournaments going forward if he didn't stop. When the event started in group stage before the very first play, uh, UB Justin, who was a community manager for Ubisoft back then, came to me like, yo, we gotta talk. And I was supposed to be banned for a full year and my team suspended from the tournament before it even started. From going from that to winning it, I was like, holy shit, I gotta turn my life around. And it was due to basically like toxicity and negativity around the game. You know, I was, I was like 18, 19. I was like, this fucking sucks. This is terrible. Fuck these guys. Fucking stupid devs that are fixing or whatever, you know, classic, like completely clueless idiot kid. And it was justified that Justin took me and Shaz, our coach, and was like, we got to fix this. Like we are heavily considering banning you specifically for a year to learn your lesson, but also suspend your entire team from the six invitationals while we're at the event. <laughs> but he realized he can't keep doing this. So he cleaned up his act and him and his teams went on to dominate competitive Rainbow Six Siege all the way up until he retired on March 1st of 2021. Following his retirement, Pengu knew he still wanted to be involved in competitive Rainbow Six Siege somehow. So shortly after his retirement, he went on to become a caster. And still to this day, he cast a lot of the big competitive events in Rainbow Six Siege, including the most recent Invitational. On top of commentating, Pengu still streams and posts YouTube videos regularly, still pulling in a lot of viewers. But the next person I want to talk about in this video is Crip. Now Crip is probably the weirdest one out of these five that I'm going to talk about in this video because the only major tournament he played in was Pro League Season 1. After that, the only tournament he played in was a qualifier for a low tier Spanish tournament, which is weird. After winning probably the most prestigious tournament in the early days of Siege, he just kind of stopped playing. But after he stopped playing Siege, he quickly picked up on another game called Apex Legends, which he would end up becoming much more well known for. In the early days of Apex Legends, he was actually really good, playing in a lot more tournaments than he did in Siege and streaming and posting YouTube videos regularly. His best year in terms of earnings was the first year of Apex in 2019. He played in four eight tier and above tournaments in 2019, earning over $7,000, which is more than he earned in Rainbow Six Siege altogether. Crip was slightly less successful in 2020, earning less than $7,000 in 2020. But in terms of content creation, this was his peak. In the month of August, he averaged 743 viewers and streamed for 231 hours. And in this year, he had his best single tournament showing where he would play second in ALGS European qualifier. Which if you don't know anything about Apex, ALGS is the biggest tournament in Apex pretty much. So for him to come second, even in a qualifier, he was really good. The next year, 2021, he would start YouTube where he would amass over 6,000 subscribers and his Twitch was still doing really good. His tournament earnings would go down once again, but he was probably more focused on content creation by this point. And 2022 was his worst year in terms of content creation and he stopped playing tournaments altogether in this year and halfway through 2023 he would seemingly stop streaming gaming and his streams turned into this But even though he has stopped playing professional video games and slowed down on content creation, from the looks of his Twitter and Instagram, he seems to be traveling and just enjoying life, so good for him. But with that, let's move on to the next person in this video, and it's going to be Rendir. Just like his fellow teammates, his first major tournament played was Season 1 of Pro League, which obviously we know he won. Moving on from this tournament, Rendir and his fellow Penta teammates would play Season 2 of Pro League. This season would not go as well for Rendir and Penta, as they would place 4th out of 8 teams, 
which means they didn't qualify for the finals. This placement would qualify them for year one season three of Pro League, but Rendir would not play in this tournament. Throughout this tournament, seven players would play for Penta, but none of them were Rendir. Rendir and Penta would next play in the 2017 Invitational Qualifiers, where they would make it to the final qualifier, but once again, they would end up not qualifying for the finals. After coming up short in so many performances on August 24th, 2016, Penta and Rendir would part ways. After this change, Rendir would join another team called Euronix Gaming, and him and his team would compete in the first season of Year 2 Pro League. And they wouldn't do so good, only qualifying for the Challenger League, which is just a lower version of Pro League. And shortly after this season of Pro League, Rendir would not play in another tournament again. And due to his lack of social media presence, that's really it. He is still kind of active on Twitter, liking random posts, but that's it. Ovi is the next person I'll go over in this video, and just like his fellow teammates, his first major tournament played was Season 1 of Pro League. But after that, Ovi did participate in Season 2 of Pro League with his fellow Penta teammates, but as you know, they didn't make it to the finals. Following this disappointing tournament, Ovi did not compete in another tournament as a player, but he did go on to coaching. Ovi made his coaching debut on June 30th of 2018, and throughout the 10 months of him coaching, Ovi's teams will compete in two A-tier tournaments. They wouldn't do so well in these tournaments, and on September 1st of 2019, Ovi would part ways with Sisu Esports, which would be his final coaching position. And the only activity from Ovi after this was on his Twitter account, where he would continue to post up until his last post on October 16th of 2021, where he was selling a Rainbow Six Siege share. The only activity after this was him liking random posts on Twitter up until January of 2023, where he would like his last post. I don't know what he's up to today, but hopefully he's doing good. And the last person I'm going to be talking about in this video is S4I. And other than Pengu, he would end up being the most successful in terms of R6 out of the original Penta team. After winning the first season of Pro League, S4I would compete for Penta in the next two seasons. Now, Penta would not qualify for the finals of these tournaments, but he was still on the team. And after Penta's disappointing performance in 2017's six invitational qualifiers, S4I and Penta would part ways. S4I would join Euronix Gaming alongside his Penta teammate Rendir. They would compete in a few tournaments for Euronix Gaming before leaving three short months after joining. After this, S4I would not compete in another major tournament until his retirement in late 2018. Following his retirement, S4I wouldn't play professionally on another game, and the only activity I could find is his Twitter account where he would like random posts up until October of last year. And yeah, that's the final person that I'm going to be going over in this video. And if you take anything from this video, it would be even if you win one of the biggest tournaments in one of the biggest games, you're not guaranteed to stay on top.